Happy New Year, true footy babies from us and our sponsors, Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in the business at men's below the waist grooming and offer precision engineered tools for your family jewels. They're here to help you have clean balls for the new year and help bring in 2021 with the right tools for the job. Happy 2021, spoiler alert. Hairy nuts are still gross. Step into the new year with your tree standing taller and shave your boys. Manscaped is here to give you a new year's resolution that you'll actually want to keep. The perfect package 3.0 is the below the waist grooming package you need to start the year off strong. Busher, are you going to be looking at any new grooming routines this season? I was thinking a nice little arrow arrangement down to the tree, if you will. I think that'd be very decadent. Jesus Christ. Come out of quarantine with cleanly shaved balls thanks to the lawnmower 3.0 and the waterproof and skin safe technology will reduce nicks to your two best friends. And I don't mean us. I mean your balls. And the third generation trimmer even has a light to shine you on the path to the promised land. Busher, we know it's summer. It's kind of uh, maybe not festival season, but there's a lot of, you know, going out, drinking, a lot of dance floor action. This is a great opportunity for you to keep your balls fresh with products like Manscaped's Crop Preserver, which is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You're already putting deodorant on your armpits, or at least in my case, not sure about you, Bush, sometimes. Period. So why not put deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? Speak for yourself, my feet's the smelliest part of my body. Speaking of which, they've also got a foot deodorant. Do they? Yeah. Ah, I knew that. And also, for additional freshness, you'll love the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Start the new year with a fresh set of testes thanks to Manscaped. Manscaped even throw in their shared travel bag to keep all your goodies stored in one convenient location. Just to clarify, when we say start the year with a fresh set of testes, we just mean yours will be cleanly shaved, not a brand new set of balls. Unless you're Lance Armstrong. Yeah. Speaking of comfort, Manscaped also offer anti-chafing boxer briefs, which are also included and will bring your underwear game to the next level. Would you say they'd bring sexy back in 2021? You could say that. I don't know why you would. Get 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. That's right, Bush. As you summed up very eloquently there, you can go to manscaped.com, get 20% off their premium ball shaving product. Seriously good products, 20% off and free shipping. If you use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word, you'd be supporting the channel and you'd also have a fresh set of balls, so why not? The only bush you need in your life is me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Bonjour. Comment stars. Welcome to True Footy Podcast 69. Nice. No. Sexy podcast. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even know how I was going to react to 69. Say, I just knew I had to react to 69. Yeah, you had all I've this built time. it up for so long. Had all this time to prepare. We've been talking about it for like the last eight podcasts. <laughs> and that's what you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, it's good to be here though. Yep. We did time this very well. It's getting Bloody True yeah. Footy Podcast 69 to be the New Year's podcast. Bloody which yeah. is generally one of our more relaxed podcasts. Um but yeah, that's why we, Drew's and I squeezed one in the other day, so yeah. to speak. It worked out nice. It was a cracking potty, by the way. I gave it a good listen. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah got some good feedback on it. It didn't, yeah. didn't really bang the views, but I think... Um, I think The people who appreciate it, like, un, like same like the people who are actually trying to do the same sort yeah. of shit that you guys are doing, so they sort of understood, like, the additional context of the stuff you're saying. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's true. I think... Like, everyone was talking about ego. I found that pretty interesting. Ego, yeah, yeah, he's had yeah that true. About ego, yeah, it got very cold worldy at one point, yeah, um, which is cool. Like, it's it's cool to talk about that sort of thing. I think, like, if you look at the comments, a lot of them were very uh, positive and um, flattering. I think a lot of them also were YouTubers. Yeah, that's what well. I meant. That's yeah. what I was sort of alluding to, like the YouTubers who can appreciate like what you, yeah. the, what you were narrating, what you're going through. Like, yeah, no, that's cool. So they found that valuable, which is probably more so than just casual people going, oh, that was a good little sort of a yeah. deeper sort of meaning. Someone did have a crack and say that we were self-indulgent, which is, he's nailed us. That's exactly, that's exactly what it was. Why else do you start a YouTube channel? <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. that particular podcast, but, yeah. um, but I, I wasn't intended to be self-indulgent. Yeah. I, can, I totally understand that, that criticism, but um, it, it is good. I've been, I, like, I was watching the same thing on True Geordie, and they did a podcast about almost like similar to what we did, just sort of reflecting on... Um, well, specifically, it was them switching from YouTube to Twitch and giving themselves a bit of a pat on the back. I don't think I really gave us a, too much of a pat on the back, but I think bottom line is it's cool to share yeah. all of that stuff yeah. that we talked about with the audience who doesn't yeah. see that the, stuff. The process. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily going to be for everyone. Some yeah. people just want like just yeah. the AFL content, get in, yeah. get out, and I respect that. And it's a good reminder to, that I need to make sure that I'm making content, not just talking about making content all the yeah. time. So... Um, but no, it was good. Um, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, um, how are you? This is um, 
Um, this is a tradition now. This is our, <laughs> is this our third or fourth? Third, I guess. Well, we've done three years, and then the first one we did was about two months in. I reckon this is yeah. our fourth. Could be. Yeah, it's our fourth New Year's party. Yeah. So, um, how are you? How are you reflecting on? It's been an interesting 2020, to say the least. I had lots going on. Like, mm. I think I mentioned it a couple of parties ago. Sort of tried, tried teaching, didn't like that. So sort of went back to the law. Sort of mm. just plugging away, finishing that off fully now. Yeah. So from that sort of perspective, then more generally, Outback Hope's just another creative sort of thing built off this a bit. So I'm just sort of early phases, just mucking around with it. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, like I sort of like feel like with that at the moment, like how we felt when we first started this was just like just try and make a few things, sort yeah. of like build a bit of content. Like, and even like Drew's, you said the other day, just a portfolio. It's like as I get better at producing and shit, it's a bit true, of a true, portfolio yeah. for that sort of shit. Is that a skill set you want to build? Yeah, I'd like to improve that sort of skill set, yeah. have a bit of a production-y sort of thing. It is fun. Yeah. It is fun. It's cool to have a creative outlet. To yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. yeah, that's why I sort of built on a bit more sort of yeah mm. I, uh, for those who might not have caught that the new, uh, Outback Hoops is your NBA podcast for anyone yep. that's new and doesn't doesn't like know about it yeah um, so. we've got seven I think out at the moment yeah is there another more content probably online? one probably early next year just a bit of an early season yarn about what's been going on so far season's been going a couple of weeks now mm. yeah yeah okay no cool that would be good yeah. something to look forward to bloody oath um, horse video still for me to edit I'll probably get that done while I'm sitting around at Rodo doing nothing yeah why did you film with a horse was Just, he good at basketball mate you smoked me and frosty that horse yeah what about basketball <laughs> <laughs> he dunked on us yeah fair enough yeah I can't yeah. make an innu- innuendo out of that yeah. one um, nah fair enough well yeah. speaking of um, animals <laughs> I was gonna say if, I feel like if the year 2020 both broadly and in my view, if 2020 was a farm animal, it would have been an absolute fucking pig. Because, <laughs> yeah, it um, it sucked, to be honest. Um, but, I mean, who knows, like, I don't know if there's this sense that now 2020 is over, people are, like, celebrating that 2020 is over, but... It's not going to magically... Issues, I was going to say, yeah. yeah, all the issues are still there. Um, that being said, yeah. it's no, that's no reason to not be optimistic. And there is more, like, now that we're sort of saying, like, Two vaccines that seem to be having a bit of traction, that sort mm. of thing. There is sort of a bit of cause for optimism, even though yeah, maybe not as much as people are sort of suggesting, like, yeah, 2023, back to normal, like, none of that, but mm. it's never going to be the same again, really, but... Yeah. On a serious note, and maybe on a personal note, how did you personally cope with the toilet paper shortage early this year as someone who does have a lot of bowel movement? <laughs> I was lucky. I'm lucky I'm still at home. The folks were pretty on the ball with all that sort of <laughs> stuff. I was joking. But I love how you gave that a serious answer. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, mum and dad really uh, had a strategy. They executed yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. They really rallied around the boys. It was a four-quarter effort. <laughs> That's it. Um, no, we, we have chatted shit for yeah. the first five minutes of this pod. Um, yeah. Today, the point of this pod today is to talk about um, the year that was in an AFL sense because yeah. we kind of talked... Drew's and I talked about it in a, in a YouTube sense and we can talk a little bit about that again to, today but um, but also want to look back at 2020 in what will be one of the most memorable um, and historic seasons just because of all the different shit that happened. Yep. Um, so, like, I mean, to start, you go back to the start of round one, like, I think I think the COVID stuff had started in, like, December, right? The, like, like, in terms of... Media coverage Real real early They were talking like Wuhan Like late yeah. December That sort of stuff But no, everyone was just sort of like Yeah it's just a local China mm. thing They'll keep it contained It doesn't Like China weren't Necessarily telling us Everything yeah. So like everyone was sort of Downplaying it a bit I remember seeing on the news Vision of the streets there They said it's yeah. normally like Bustling And it was just Absolutely yeah. no one there And I think they had Like people welded Into their apartments Like you'd, they'd had footage <laughs> Of people outside their apartments Like big metal bars Welded across mm. their apartment doors That's forcing people. terrifying Yeah uh, yeah so yeah I, it's just amazing how that went from like we've seen that in december january going yeah, yeah that probably won't happen to us yeah. surely not it's never happened before why would it happen now mm. um so then obviously the momentum that we brought into march i was actually overseas in um in no, thailand and vietnam thai, yeah. yeah thailand and vietnam yeah. for two weeks pretty much the entire time frame of when everything yeah. exploded because you had to rush back, didn't you? Yeah. Uh, there was a threat of it. I didn't yeah. have to in the end. We got, got our whole holiday in, but yeah. um, I was over there with my partner at the time. I do remember doing a podcast here with you, with Brendan yeah. and uh, Callum. Yeah. Uh, the the fantasy. fantasy podcast, yeah, which was completely null and void, like not long <laughs> after that. But um, like, I, I remember making heaps of content in the days prior to leaving 
and releasing it as I went. I had my round one predictions in there. I had my season predictions in there. I had two other videos relevant to football that were all scheduled to release over this <laughs> insane two week period. And you could tell like throughout those videos, they're like, oh, I obviously had no idea what was about to happen. Cause like the, the news cycle through that period was, it was just changing by the hour. Uh, like I was, I'm thankful to say it was, I was almost in like a different reality. Like I was literally by the pool every day, checking my phone on the hotel Wi-Fi, just seeing yeah. like increasingly alarming news about coronavirus. And I don't think it really hit Australia yet. I think Perth had a few cases and over East yeah. a few, but it certainly hadn't taken over yet. I don't think we'd copped it really bad until we started bringing people back. So sort of mm. I think that's when we sort of started seeing yes. it a bit. Because we, by and, large, we by and large kept it away, except for the Victoria flare up, the New South Wales one now. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, WA in particular didn't have too much to think about, and thankfully we've kind of escaped it. And yeah, our, like, we had cases, but none of them were, like, community-based. They were yeah. all, like, quarantined. Yeah, it did get worrisome for a little bit there, just because yeah. I think... I still think it could happen here. Like, yeah. now that thing, people are complacent, like, there's still cases over and stuff, I reckon I wouldn't put it past it for it to flare up here for a bit. Mm. Wouldn't yeah, surprise yeah, me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I definitely don't think we're out of the woods yet, so um, fingers crossed. But Knock on wood. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> but just getting back to, like, what it was like at that time, it went yeah. from there was talk the AFL season might be impacted, and when I first read that, I was like, surely not. Like, nah, uh-huh. it would have to be big to make the AFL have to think twice about yeah. it. And then it became, like, are we going to get a season at all? Are they going to cancel the season? Are they going to postpone the season? And when that talk started to really happen, that's it's so, so dumb and it shows how, like, sh- sheltered I am that like when AFL got threatened, I was like, oh my God, this is a pandemic. (laughs) You know, like that's, Uh, because obviously that's unprecedented. uh, Do you remember your thought process around that sort of time? What what made me think, oh shit, this is real? Yeah, I guess. Well, it was similar. It was AFL to an extent, but it was the NBA, because the NBA was the first like American-based league to shut down because of Rona. Mm, Yeah. Because there was a player, Rudy Gobert, who was like, he was taking a bit of a piss with it. Like he was touching mics and stuff. Like oh, geez, being man. A bit how, of it. how bad is that? Yeah, and then he's the guy that got it first in the league. So he, his PR off that was horrendous. Mm, mm. But yeah, once the NBA got shut down and then all those serious talks, like, because I've always sort of felt like as Australia, as an island and stuff, we're reason, we can reasonably protect ourselves and that sort of stuff mm. as we have compared to other countries. But it, it required yeah. us going into lock, yeah, like we had to, borders. And yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for the way you've handled it. Um, for sure. I do remember, like, as I was, as the news, like, was coming through, and this is just a silly, like, YouTube perspective of it, but I was actually kind of panicking for the channel. I was like, I've got these five videos released, and then I yeah. considered just dropping them all, at, like, one after the other in the next five days, rather than schedule it out, yeah. which, like, is a, it's bad strategically, but it got to the point where I was like, if all of these videos could be useless by the time, like, they're all scheduled to come out, yeah. like, round one predictions, it was, it would have been... Um, thankfully like i released it just just in time like we got round one in which made all the difference but um yeah like i must admit um i mean we we are this is a footy footy podcast we're talking about it in a in a strictly afl context like i'm not i don't want to sound like um covid so serious because it affected the afl we're talking about it covid affecting it's a football podcast not a life podcast yeah yeah i'm not trying to sound like um like i have serious I, I was a victim of COVID because yeah. my YouTube channel was threatened, but that was the sort of stuff that mm. was going through my head. I was really, really worried that, you know, the season would be under threat and yeah. something I'm really passionate about being under threat as well. Um, but yeah, as it happened, obviously they compromised and instead of postponing round one, we played it yeah. with no crowds. And that was, that was weird. That was even a last minute decision. The no crowds weren't, how last minute that was a pretty last minute decision i thought because i was sort of trying to yeah. plan and then like a few days before they said yeah no crowds i think possibly yeah you, yeah. you might be right there um and it would have been an incredibly difficult position for gil to be in there was really two schools of thought wasn't there there's like half the from what i was reading and not that you can really look at facebook comments and think that's like a good <laughs> yeah. echo cross, chamber cross of excite- stupidity. Yeah, exactly but it did seem like there were really two schools of thought where half the people thought it was a joke that Gil even wanted to progress with the league. And then the other half just thought, nah, you're overreacting or you guys, like, I, coronavirus is not real. i got to admit, when it first really was real, Rona, I was sort of like, yeah, we got to prioritise dealing with this. I was sort of probably a little initially in that, yeah, we got to let footy not go this year. we got to do what we got to do. I was sort of... So that, you, were, you wanted them... I was to probably more in that camp initially, like, once, like when we didn't have the information, like... Hmm when we weren't informed about corona how to manage it and that sort of stuff i was yeah. sort of like 
if you got to be extra cautious and do what you got to do, mm. I'm not going to begrudge you yeah. by being extra cautious when we don't know. Yeah, I. Um, that was sort of my stance with it. But then once more info came out, once Australia sort of was able to figure their climate out, I was like, yeah, mm. I think there's context for the leak as they found. Yeah, I. Uh, I must admit, my opinion was probably swayed by the fact that I really wanted football. Yeah, well, honest. obviously I wanted it, but like, yeah. Yeah, I was sort of in the more macro. You're like, yeah, it's yeah. a bloody once in a century <laughs> sort of pandemic type yeah. thing. We got to do what we got to do. I think I was. I'm a Liverpool fan as well as. Um, as many people would know, and we were like, obviously, it hadn't won the Premier League in like twenty years at that point, yeah. and you just pretty much had it sewn up. But you just needed a yeah. few more games to get the was, necessary th- points or something, I th- wasn't it? I think it, it was two wins. Yeah. I think it was two more wins. Two, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, um, to clinch the league, the title, and I think they postponed. I think they might have dabbled a little bit with empty crowds at first, and then yeah. they, they postponed. I could be wrong. I remember saying some empty Premier League games. There's certainly, like, I yeah, think they're empty yeah. at the moment again, yeah. um, if I'm not mistaken. I don't get to yeah. watch a lot of games anymore. But, um, yeah, but I remember thinking as a, as a fan, I was like, that is absolutely fucking typical. Mm. Liverpool are on the verge of winning the league. Yeah. They, they were talking about cancelling the yeah. league, calling it null and void. Well, even AFLW. Yeah, that's like true. Like the Dockers. Yeah. The Freo Dockers team, they were shattered. Yeah. Like, they were undefeated. They were looking mm. great. And it was just the carpet was pulled out underneath them yeah. in the middle of the finals. That does suck. I mean, with all due respect to that league, it doesn't quite hold as much water as I think Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, but still, but, I'm so sort of saying up. the parallels. No, no you're right. Yeah. You're right because I think there was a lot of talk at the time that they ca- they cancelled it prematurely uh-huh. because yeah, they only they, had to get a few more games out with the women's league. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, that's right. So they postponed the um, the AFL obviously and the VFL men's. Um, but cancelled the AFLW. I think logistically it must have been too hard to get a season in because they, ban- they huh. when they postponed at the end of round one, they they did that for two months. Huh. So they must have felt logistically it was too hard to get a women's league in. Yeah, I d- huh. of course feel. But it was at the tail end already. Like they'd already played yeah, the fast, yeah, yeah. fast majority. They only had to probably get a three, four more finals games yeah. out. And yeah, the season was wrapped up. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm like again, like I still huh. I thought it was weird. Like. Um, that they didn't go yeah. ahead with it, but um, but yeah. Anyway, yeah. so like, just back to Liverpool. Just the um, it's just classic that the first title they win has to be in empty stands and uh, you know postponed sort of. Yeah, environment. I think I remember you saying earlier in the year if you if you had witnessed Fremantle winning its first AFL Premiership, you would hate for it to have been at a half field or Gabba or mm. three quarter field Gabba. Yeah, not hate, but well, I sort of like same, would it? it was weird. I was sort of like. Because we had the big asterisk potty chat earlier in the end. My funny thing was I had that stance, but at the same time a Freo one, I was going to be like, why mm. do we have to win this year? Yeah. I sort of realistically valued a victory this year as much as any other year, but it still felt like I'd want it to be just a normal one, the first. Yeah. I guess because yeah, it's Freo's sure. first. Like if we'd already won one, and I wouldn't have cared whether it, like just here, it's just win, just win. Yeah. But the first, you want that to be a bit more yeah, uh, I, picturesque, I guess. Like, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think... Uh, I think, like, Richmond, it was their third, so yeah, they, you know, their fans probably just cherished it as much as any other. And they were just happy to have overcome the adversity and stuff as well. Yeah. So at that point, they've won their flags. They've just mm. had the most recent thing of adversity, rather, whereas Freo, it's their first one. You kind of want the poetry of it yeah. sort of thing. Oh, yeah, I agree. I think uh, if I was an Eagles fan, if I was an Eagles fan, and <laughs> now nah, if we had won the flag this year, and I can't say for sure because we didn't, but if we'd won it, I don't think it would have been quite as cool. I don't know. But there's no real strong argument yeah. for that because the the, yeah. the it, we're not saying yeah. that the the flag means any yeah. less. Yeah, like I'm only saying it purely from a Freo Aesthetic. Virgin <laughs> Premiership perspective, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, yeah, no, I, th- I think yeah. we're saying the same thing basically. Yeah. Um, do you remember how weird it was to have empty stadiums in the AFL? Sure. Because round one they didn't have any crowd effects either. If I'm not yeah. mistaken, they just went completely. Yeah, like yeah. full yeah. under 18. Oh, Smithy, Smithy, pass, yeah. pass. Yeah. Ah, like you can hear everything. Yeah. The Lock it in, boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Exactly right. That that was eerie. Um, and I remember feeling a bit flat because they called the postponement right halfway through the it. Eagles game, yeah. like right before yeah. the Eagles game. So that that was a weird experience. It would have been weird playing in that game. Yeah. Um, knowing that you know it could be the last game of the season at that point. Yeah. yeah. But eventually we resumed in May. The true to their word, we got we got the season back in uh, with I think no crowds again when we started. It was yeah, yeah initially zero crowds. yeah yeah because it was all well there was it was all straight to Queensland initially. No, it wasn't. So you had round two to five was yeah. normal in terms okay. of venues. Yeah. Um, 
but I think there was hub still. So there was there was Queensland hub. You're right, but the but oh yeah, because way it was only us that had to. It was, that was like for us, but yeah, a, yeah. It was just it was WA in South Australia. Clubs. Just WA in yeah. South Australia had to go to Queensland. That's what it was. Yeah. So the Victorians still played at home because yeah. um, we just went stricter with our borders. South Australia, WA. That's why we had to. Yeah, that do is it why. from the offset. Yeah, exactly right. But um, then in round three we had more drama. Conor McKenna yeah. tests positive to COVID nineteen and then doesn't test positive to COVID nineteen. False negative or whatever. Fa- false. Yeah. False, false positive. positive yeah. Um, which is. By the way, it seems like a huge issue with COVID-19 testing. It doesn't yeah. seem to be overly reliable. Um, that's, uh, yeah. Certainly back then anyway. Um, but then by round six, due to the Victor- Victorian situation, obviously they had another outbreak. Yeah. Um, there were no more games there for the whole year. And at that point, that looked like the biggest threat to the integrity of the fairness of the league mm. because you had 10 teams not playing home games anymore. Yeah. So they all had to hub in Queensland. Some went to WA for a couple of games, South Australia, yeah. but they all set up basically like home grounds. Yeah. I think Geelong basically adopted the Gabba because I think they only lost one game there all year. Um, but yeah, of course, like that's the first moment where you're like, oh, if, if like yeah. a non, not a, maybe if a non-Victorian team wins this year, those Victorian teams are all kind of robbed. So you know what I mean? Mm. Like there's, it, there's, it just threw the balance yeah. out a little bit. Um, thankfully, as we know, it turned out not to matter too much. Um, but that was at least a talking point at the time. Um, and Especially when Brisbane were sort of at the peak. Where, yeah. Yeah. It was an unfortunate circumstance that the, this season, I did say it once before, but all the three states that were clamouring to host the grand final and host games this season all had a major contender at the time. Yeah. Uh, maybe the Eagles obviously finished. They fell fifth. off, but they were... They were a flag favourite at one for point. For most of the season, they were right in the thick of it. Yeah, they were literally the flag yeah. favourite mid-year. So um, that kind of threw it out of balance as well. With And then, you know, the Lions yeah. being uh, one of the strongest teams throughout the season. Um, but also, it's probably not important to acknowledge, and this is probably not something that gets acknowledged enough, that the sacrifice of the players yeah. and, and staff this mm. year. Yeah. Because... Um, going over to Hub in particular, all those Victorian guys who uh, in some cases would have left their families, some would have brought them over, which would have been yeah. almost equally challenging. Um, or they took significant pay cuts yep. to play pretty much for our entertainment. And I'm sure they'd rather be playing than not playing. Like They'd probably yeah. just be isolated at home in Victoria anyway. But their AFL players are a, they're kind of targeted in the sense of like, it's easy to throw the criticism of, oh, you make this much money, so, you know, you should be making, you should just cop it, you should just cop these sacrifices, blah blah blah. But I, I do think I'm, I am quite grateful for what the playing uh, body and, you know, all the support staff that involved, go into yeah. it that went ahead to make this season, which is uh, yeah, from Gill down, they've done a great job. I'd say mm. the whole league, the teams, everyone. I think they've did everything in their power to make the season as good as it could be yeah considering and, the circumstances so and that's another point on, on Gil because he's another one I actually quite like Gil yeah I'm a fan he looked exhausted this year <laughs> yeah like, he had that hobo beard yeah, going bloody like mad scientist um, but I've always found him quite dignified certainly um, yeah he, he's one that as CEO of the AFL will get targeted in interviews like he's yeah. getting do you remember that weird interview was it on 360 where Robbo asked him a really dumb question nah nah it was weird um it was literally I think it got posted by Nuffies on AFL pages and it was like what's um, Robbo's blood alcohol content but it was <laughs> it, it was like a fairly normal interview to that point it was over like Zoom or Skype and at the end of it he goes to what extent is your position under threat to kill and it was just like what the fuck like why would he get <laughs> sacked because of COVID-19 uh, if, if you haven't seen it then um, I recommend going watch it because I probably just butchered retelling it but it was you could tell Gil was just like I don't understand the question because uh, uh, it was a ro- typical Robbo question where he sounded drunk and it uh, just like laboured towards the end of it. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, no, just back on Gil though, like people are quick to judge around like, oh, he just wants to get a season in, blah, 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 the AFL wants to make money. He is literally the man in charge of making sure the AFL gets through this season. Uh-huh. There is no one else higher than him who's going to make him do it. Do you know mm, what I mean? Like yeah. he's the man that's responsible. So he needs to, within reason, push every every boundary to ensure that this league gets through normally and you know if the worst is it that we've just cut two list spots per club we've done pretty well this year considering how bad it looked at one point i think there was there was 
you can never tell when it's sensationalist media, but there was talk like clubs wouldn't survive this season. Yeah, I remember that early in the pace where I was like saying, yeah, North Melbourne and someone might have to merge or yeah. shit like that. And the manoeuvring around to get this season, moving 10 Victorian clubs to Queensland and playing uh. hubs and then having like isolation bubbles everywhere. Uh. There were so many moving parts this mm. season. Like, like the state down. governments cooperating, like Queensland yeah. helped a lot with the AFL. Like, obviously, the AFL were very grateful to them. Like, mm. that, yeah. So fair enough. Exactly. So because Queensland did step up and help. For sure. Especially as a rugby state as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, it sounded like WA, like McGowan, just wasn't even that interested in... Yeah, like, he wasn't too fast. Which fair enough. But yeah. Can't really... I'm not really going to complain. Mm. Oh, come on, come on. Have a hard border stance, but football's all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, long story short... Um, yeah, it was it was a weird season with lots of inequities, um, even more so than a yeah. usual AFL season. Um, well, in some sense, there was the most equal season with seventeen games rather than twenty two. Everyone true. only playing two once. That's the one equal positive yeah. equalization thing true. out of a sea of shit that happened this year. That's the one positive in terms of equalization. This is true, but then you'd also thrown out of whack by the yeah. home grounds. Exactly. Situation. Yeah, the, I'm not saying it was. I'm yeah, just I saying understand. that's one mitigating factor in a sea of shit. Yeah. Basically, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is kind of like a real AFL 360-like airy-fairy question, but to what extent do you think um, this pandemic has influenced the way we perceive sport? Because, like, at the time of COVID, we sort of, as we touched on earlier, like, a lot of people were like, it's just sport, fuck it mm. off. Like, there's more important things, yeah. which, you know, can't really argue with yeah. that. <laughs> but to some extent, with isolation, particularly, I guess, over East, where... A lot of people were just like locked down for a long period of time. Um, and it's the same in Europe and with the, in the UK with the Premier League and stuff yeah. like that. I think you could almost argue that sports almost had a inflated sense of importance now. Like, do you think... I, I don't think anyone could really dispute the value of sport to people this year. Mm. Um, like, imagine being locked down in Melbourne and having no football. Uh. <laughs> we, did, we did go like 10 weeks without football, yeah. to be fair. But I don't know. I, I kind of felt like we weren't locked down at that stage. Really, we were just sort of like encouraged to stay. It wasn't like oh, a no, formal. Perth. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Perth was. Yeah. Yeah. Even all of Australia, really. This was before Melbourne yeah, really yeah. broken out. So like, I am using the word lockdown yeah. liberally. Yeah. yeah. No, that's you're right. But, um, but my my point is, I just think we saw, kind of like a elevated sense of importance for sport. I think, like when you see the lengths that we go to 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 ensure that a footy season still gets played mm. like it shows that sport is really important in society well, it's the economics of it as much as anything just the yeah. sheer amount of money involved is an indicator of it. Yeah. like there was billions of dollars on the line they sort of had Very to true. try and keep their industry alive like mm. that's a big gravy train with a lot of other third parties hooked to it like sponsors other yeah. business interests for sure. Like even the businesses owned by some of these players because a lot of these guys are buying businesses doing that sort of stuff like so mm. if that drip feed from the tops going down that might affect their businesses and 100 percent. Sort of, yeah yeah no i understand that side of it where so that's sort of why that that yeah. indicates just how big it is just that sheer scale mm. of that economics of it i just mean even socially the yeah. social importance of sport to people i, yeah. I don't know maybe yeah. I, maybe i'm just coming from a hippie standpoint but like well yeah, that's what i'm sort of saying I'm, I'm saying you're right i'm just i'm saying the dollars yeah. sort of show that because it's supply and demand like people sure. care about football they're prepared to spend this money in on the industry yeah so there is a demand. For sure. Yeah. I think mean, another thing that needs to be acknowledged as well is the sacrifices by like support staff this year. Mm. I think I read that Scott Selwood is like was like a development coach at Geelong this year. Uh-huh. And he had to he either lost his job or took a pay cut and kept working there and he ended up labouring to make money. Bloody hell. Yeah. This is an AFL player who uh-huh. played a ten year career off the top of my head. Uh-huh. Um so this gives you scope as to like yeah, some of the how, how hard it would have been mm. for some of these guys to go from yeah. having, you know, not a sewn up career, but, you know, a pretty like, good wicket. Like, even just beyond the AFL itself, like, Lent chatting to Lenny on some of those parties, some of the people he was saying that yeah. got lost their jobs at, like, the WA Football Commission, I assume mm. it'd be the same in, like, the Waffle and the Sandful and other state leagues and stuff. So, yeah. the impact's probably been felt in those leagues, probably just as drastically, if not more. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah, well, the v- VFL yeah. got cancelled. So, yeah. yeah, that sucks. Um, all right, where are we on my notes? Um, yeah, so just getting back to, I guess, just recapping the season. Wasn't the timeline. Meant, wasn't meant to go completely COVID, which we have so far. Um, but it was evident, I think, early on 
that there were a few clear teams this year, um, particularly early. So like Port had, I think they led the ladder at every round change. At pretty the end of every round. Pretty I, much, I think. I think, I think yeah. they actually pulled that off. Yeah. Um, and Brizzy might have pipped them one round, but other than that. I've got a feeling they didn't, hey. But, but I think it, it might have been not even pipped and they were just equal. And, yeah. yeah. Someone might have had a percentage, something like that. Yeah, so you had the Port... Uh, the power of the cats and the lions, I think, emerges the first cu- the first three. Where you're like, yeah. oh yeah, these guys are pretty damn good. And then I think, to a lesser extent, Richmond and West Coast kind of emerged later. West they Coast- just sort of had their respect from the past few years. Teams were like, yeah, when those teams start clicking, they'll be good. It's like when West Coast got home and was able to string together. West Coast was so bad in the hub, though. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, my confidence was shaken. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm not guaranteed. We- well, I'm not guaranteeing we're playing finals this year. That's how bad it was. Um, which we've covered in previous podcasts, yeah. so I don't need to delve into that. But yeah, no, so we were pretty putrid in the first hub and, and Richmond did their thing where they started the season yeah. slowly uh, and we were a little up and down. I think they got torched. And they were particularly the vocal once they got put in the hubs and stuff. Mm. They were the more vocal complaining about the circumstances that Corona put the leg in. Mm. So the sort of people probably had their doubts going, yeah, well, I did, certainly. Yeah, I was going to say, I think this I is certainly your did. opinion at the time. I yeah, I certainly was sort of like, yeah, they're... This is there. I thought the wheels were going to fall off. Or? Yeah, if ever there was going to be a year where Richmond had it derailed, it would be yeah. this year because yeah. um, so I just didn't think yeah. adversity. They had in a bit of maybe not inner turmoil, but they had their dramas in the yeah. hub and stuff like that. And um, yeah, unavailability, injuries. Um, a few players that chose not to go into the hub. Yeah, yeah, like Edwards and Hawley, yeah. um, two very important players. And no MCG, and yeah. that was all criticism. Yeah, those were all criticisms of Richmond previously. Yeah, I had a good injury run for a couple. Of, maybe not criticisms, but just like reasons yeah. to maybe discount their not yeah. even discount their premiership. I think what I'm trying to say appendixes is appendixes on the end of there. It's it's more like this team hasn't necessarily been tested yet yeah. because things have kind of gone their way, but. Um, in terms of like injury in particular yeah. and the MCG thing, that's just not necessarily my opinion. It's just mm. things you could say against Richmond whereas yeah. they've just obliterated both yeah. of those potential criticisms this year where they had a bad injury run um, I guess they had a bad injury run in 19 but I don't know I felt I feel like all the adversity piled up this year and to see them yeah. emerge as the best team is just yeah they certainly silenced the doubters like myself yeah yeah they, they've definitely elevated themselves to be one of the greats but we'll, we'll touch on that shortly um, yeah so the Eagles obviously Came good later, emerged as flag favourites at one point, which I didn't accept at the time. I didn't agree yeah. with it. Because it was pretty much smack bang in the middle of your run here yeah. at home. Which I think it was when we obliterated a very poor Collingwood, oh. admittedly playing very good football. And then we, when we beat Geelong in Perth, that was a very good win because oh. we were a few, quite a few goals down. I want to say four goals down. And Geelong were yeah. arguably the best team this year, like over mm. the course of yeah. it. Um, but obviously... The difference between fourth and fifth this year was a touch yeah. ball that was maybe wrong. I didn't really have an issue with it, but either way, it was pretty line ball. Um, but yeah, long story short, Port, uh, the top four was Port, uh, Brisbane, uh, Richmond, I think, came third, and then Geelong fourth. Yeah. Um, and those were our four real contenders, I guess, going into the finals. They were the four. Going they were the into four. Finals. I think Richmond was probably still my favourite. I think I was leaning towards. Brizzy or Geelong, maybe I can't recall. I could be wrong, but I think I was. I think I said Richmond, and then that first week of the finals, I felt like that Brisbane win flipped the season on its head when they uh, not smashed Richmond, but it was just amazing football. Convincing win, great, great win. Um, I think it was only a couple of goals, but it was just like, wow, this Brisbane uh, team is good, and they've just broken a fifteen-game hoodoo, eleven-year hoodoo against Richmond. And then the grand final is going to be at home as well, plus a home prelim. I was like, Brisbane are in the box seat here. Uh, um, we had probably one of our best first week of finals ever. Yeah, there were some cracking games in there for sure. So Brisbane, Richmond, Port and Geelong, West Coast Collingwood, broke yeah. my heart. <laughs> yeah. No, it wasn't It wasn't a heartbreaker, but obviously no one likes to lose an amazing game like that. Um, and then St Kilda Bulldogs was another fantastic yeah. game that was just like ebbed, ebbed and flowed like no other. Um Brisbane then kind of bottled it in the prelim yeah. with uh, with a performance that really didn't indicate how good this team was. Mm. It's This Geelong team is very good, battle-hardened, but Brisbane was playing at home, had just knocked off the premiership favourites, former premiers. Had the week off. Yeah, had the week off. And not only that, didn't really get close to Geelong. It was just uh. a very one-sided affair. And uh, Richmond broke Port Adelaide hearts in, in Adelaide mm. in the prelim and... But that was sad because I was going for Port. Yeah. Um, it would have been cool to see Port in the grand final. But 
Um, you know, a fantastic and completely unexpe- unexpected season from Hinkley and, and those boys as well. So Ken um, Hinkley saved his ass compared to where he was at the start of the season. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, well, add that add him to the list of coaches who nearly get sacked and then do well. Yeah. <laughs> like Simpson, more or less, was like Hardwick. That. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it does. It does go to Buckley. Show. Buckley, yeah, yeah. It go, goes to show um, the faith needs to be restored a little bit. Mind you, it's yeah. still early in Hinkley. He's like he could, they could miss finals next year, and it yeah. wouldn't be like the biggest shock. I wouldn't yeah. bet on it. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah. Long story short, then we are at the grand final, and um, Richmond played Geelong in the first ever night grand final, historic huh? grand final at the Gabba. Uh, pretty good spectacle in the end, although I do. Part of me does wish like a Richmond Geelong up to stadium grand final. That would have been on sick. that twenty eight degree day. Yeah, it was a beautiful day here. Yeah. And they, and it was bloody Pelton and Brizzy. Yeah, that's right. It was yeah. like they would actually there was talk they might call off the game at one yeah. point, which was heart and mouth stuff for a guy who had just set up his live stream for yeah. the biggest day of the footy calendar. Yeah. <laughs> Again, thirty three thousand people would have missed out on getting to watch 40 it. Forty now. Oh, was it forty? Yeah, Shit, yeah. yeah. It's forty. Yeah, I'm the victim. No, not really. Um yeah, no, so any long story short, great grand final drama. A couple of blokes knocked out. Uh, what, what did uh, Ablett do? Break his shoulder. Yeah, and came back out. Came back on. Yeah. Phenom- phenomenal effort. Um, he's an absolute monster of a man. Yeah. And then obviously we bid goodbye to him and he's probably yeah. been the greatest player of the modern era, yeah. uh, depending on how you define modern. But he's been the best in my lifetime probably. Yeah, I'd uh, definitely have him as my probably go. I'd... Yeah, in terms of yeah. Yeah, what he's achieved. Yeah. Um, I guess to touch on Richmond winning the flag, we've talked about how good they are and how this kind of underpins. It's almost like, uh, to borrow a phrase from Footy A to Z, it was the crown jewel in their three premierships was yeah. this year because of the, the adversity they have. And this yeah. probably elevates... This does elevate them on that Geelong, Brisbane, Hawthorne level. Yeah. Whether or not you peg them first in that, not sure. But I think they've earned... In it. the convo. Certainly in the convo. In the tier, if we're doing a tier maker. Yeah, in the tier maker, yeah. Um, and fuck, they could, they could win again next year, which would probably elevate them above Hawthorne, which is wild uh, because I don't feel like the team is extremely talented. Do you uh, know what I mean? Like, they're another system team like Hawthorne. Yeah, there's guys that, like, like Jaden Short, like, I was surprised at how mm. big a year he had for what little cloud I'd heard about yeah. him. Like, Richmond's full yeah. of players like that, yeah. which is a credit to them. I mean, they do have the top end talent. Yeah, right? yeah. obviously, like um, Dusty, Coach. Yeah, uh, Rewalt. I know Rewalt didn't even fire a shot that much this year because he's uh, Lynch has probably uh, yeah. superseded him as like the the main guy up forward now. Yeah. Dylan Grimes is amazing down back. Basha Hooley and Shane yeah. Edwards they went out with for ages. Like they had guys like Bolter and Stack sort of step up. Uh, not for Stack, I meant to say. Uh, oh, so I don't Shai think Bolton. Stack stepped up. <laughs> I think He's Stack shat the bed. Yeah, <laughs> I think Stack is a bad example. I, I meant Shy Bolton, the other. Yeah, yeah Shy is. Australian. Yeah, Shy is outstanding. Um, yeah, so I mean, Richmond are just going to while they have this six system with great leaders, they can rotate new talent in, like a Noah Bolter. Yeah. Noah Bolter, maybe if he gets drafted north, isn't the player he is right now. Mm. Um, and it, I mean, we've we've kissed Richmond's ass a lot since they've won the flag, but um, it, you can't do a New Year's party without. Yeah, mentioning the premiers. Um. Yeah, and I, I think it's people may not agree. I think there's a po- it is kind of positive that we had a, a Victorian team win the flag this year, in the sense that no one can argue that there's an asterisk over Richmond's mm. flag. I would not argue, despite our little hypothetical debate <laughs> earlier in the year, which was out of context, like yeah. it's not really related to this. But there was so much different information around Rona yeah, and yeah. everything. That was like, a very specific time specific, yeah, yeah obviously. Then. So definitely. I would not argue that if had Brisbane had won the flag, it would have been an asterisk. Mm. However, if someone like a Brisbane had bobbed up or a Port Adelaide had bobbed up and won the flag, there would probably be a contingent, contingent of people. There's definitely like, the argument. It would be like more like, oh, yeah, but Richmond played the whole season in Queensland that year. Yeah. Or Geelong played the whole season in Queensland that year. Mm. Now that... And I, I'm kind of glad for Port Adelaide fans and Brisbane fans that they didn't win the flag. Like, if, if they're going to win a flag, probably rather do it under the normal circumstances, similar mm. to how you were saying with Fremantle. Yeah. No, I'm sure they'd way rather win the flag. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sort of like, just spitballing here. But I think, I, long story short, I think Richmond winning the flag is good in the sense that nobody can reflect on this year mm. as compromised. It's kind of what you would have expected if it was a normal yeah. year. Yeah, so not only does it consolidate them as an all-time great team, because of these ridiculous circumstances, it's also 
yeah, like I said, it just it just allows 2020 to be reflected on as a relative, I won't say normal year, but it's, I don't think we need a footnote. I don't think we need an mm. asterisk. Richmond won the flag and it was a very good premiership. So <sighs> just when you thought the drama would be over for 2020, yeah. we had probably one of the biggest, dr- most dramatic trade periods of all time in terms of story. Yeah. Uh, when was the last time we had this much drama in a trade period? I was going to say Chris Judd requesting a trade was a bombshell. I think for Vola going to Brisbane was a bombshell. But in terms of outrage... Yeah, this is like... The response to the... Betrayal, trial. like... <laughs> lack yeah. of loyalty from the club, like... Yeah. Just so, so it feels like... You were pretty positive on Collingwood, weren't you? Yeah, mate. I loved, I loved the move. I reckon Daddy Maguire should get a pay rise and keep his job. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, nah, so it's for, yeah. for those listening, we are talking about Adam Trelaw's shock exit from the Collingwood Footy Club yep. something you were very you had very strong opinions on yeah obviously I thought it was pretty ridiculous the fact like you give this guy a five year extension go yeah we're going to keep you at the club and then two years later because you've shat the bed with your finances you're pushing him out the door hmm. and like they've still they've finally figured out how, who's paying what portion of what or are they still up in arms about uh, it I haven't heard anything I think they finalised it I could be uh, wrong I don't know the details uh, I think it's finalised now there was a second, As of the draft They were still Hashing out yeah. the figures There was a secondary uh, fo- Deadline Which I, I uh, would hope Is passed by now Because it's bloody yeah, yeah. New Year's Eve Bloody oath um, Yeah, yeah that, It's I, just I a think, debacle I reckon Yeah we've covered that That pretty heavily On the yep. on the channel So I don't really have Too much new to say Other than to say It's one thing To mess up your finances To the point where You have to make Moves that seem dumb, which mm. you know, trading Trelaw for a second rounder is not strategically sound in isolation. Yeah. That being said, losing a rising star from two years ago, Jane yeah. Stevenson. Yes, yeah, so if that's if that happens in isolation, you probably think, mm. oh, wait, a bit of a surprise. But because it yeah. all happened together, it's like, fuck, <laughs> what's yeah. happening? At and the fact, it, once the major got a hold of it, they were in salary cap problems. Everyone knew. Yeah, exactly. Which time like that's the thing. If they'd kept it under wraps, they probably could have got more out of trying to do these trades. I'm sure they tried to keep that under wraps. To yeah. be fair, it's not really yeah. something they can control. That's uh, yeah. it was a bombshell story waiting to happen. Um, but yeah, I think it's just the management side of it. It's, like I said, it's one thing to mess up your finances and another yeah. thing to what it appears and what it sounded like was a very hurtful yeah. situation with Trelaw where Trelaw was just turfed. Like feels. the way Buckley handled it by the sounds. Yeah. Well, I mean, Trelaw came out and said that he was told the playing, gr- club didn't wa- uh, playing group didn't want Trelaw anymore. That's yeah. coming from Trelaw himself. So, like, I'm not, I'm not mm. a fly on the wall. I don't know exactly what happened, yeah. but it just doesn't seem like it was well handled. Yeah, it seems pretty horrendous, really. Yeah, not enough. I was going to say not enough upfront conversations. I think there were upfront conversations, but maybe not honest upfront yeah. conversations. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, but anyway, that's uh, more or less 2020 in a football yeah. sense. Um, the draft was yeah. relatively undramatic, yeah. non-dramatic. Short, but that was to be expected yeah. considering the circumstances. Yeah. I guess if we had to round off before we finish the pod some top moments from this season as a fan. Huh. Uh, anything that particularly stands out I've to you? I've got to say, even though it was a loss, getting to go to a game was good. Oh, yeah, we went. Yeah. that's the only yeah. game I went to this year. I yeah, pretty to- sure. I, I might have went to another one, but I think that's the only game I went to as well was that Geelong game that we went yeah. to with Drews. Yeah, which he vlogged, which is uh, yeah. a great great fun. It was always fun watching a Drewsy vlog. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was actually the only game I went to as well. I didn't yeah. get to go to an Eagles game this year, unfortunately. Uh, what else? Yeah, that was good, like... Pumping North Melbourne late in the year was a good sort of thing to see, like okay. some of the progress from the year, like because you could sort of see the progress game to game, even though there were losses, there were wins, or sort of like yeah, a bit of back and forth. But it was sort of building in in that game where we killed him. It sort of was just sort of like we're well, not killed him, but like mm. it sort of showed what we've been building towards, even though yeah, and we got still y- young kids doing the heavy lifting. Exactly, as well. yeah, that's exactly it. Like yeah. Brayshaw's Cherries of the World, Sarong, Sarong, exactly winning the Rising Star. Mm. Even next year, we're going to get like Hayden Young back inside. He's mm. someone I'm really excited about. Even if some of our young kids we're taking this year, I'm quite excited about. Yeah, for sure. So they'll keep building on that foundation and take the weight off guys like Fife and Walters, mm-hmm. which means we're hopefully in a better position to succeed. Yeah. So it was good to sort of see that in that game. True. And then, uh, Anything else come to mind? The grand final and the stream in general, yeah. that was all pretty uh, good. Yeah, I talked about that the other day. That was a real high point of... Uh, Almost a high point of true footy, to be honest. Yeah. Um, 40,000, you said it's up to now. That's yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, t- 40,000 total views on it. And uh, concurrently, that was it was 36,000 by the time the game yeah, had ended. Exactly. So like, that's that's a lot of people at the time. Um, 
sharing in something I'm passionate about, surrounded by all my best friends, sinking piss, talking about footy. Like, yeah, yeah that's a that's a real life high point for me, to be honest. Yeah, um, it was a pretty good day. Yeah. Uh, and it was good game footy as well. Yeah, but, yeah. We live streamed last year, Richmond GWS. Not, yeah. not a great game. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, wait, I wasn't on last year. You, you were. Yeah, it was just yeah. me and Callum. But yeah, yeah. Um, comparatively, the experience... Uh, it just wasn't quite the same as this year. It was yeah. special. So I'd, I'd love to capture that every single grand final. Would be yeah, awesome. yeah, bloody oath. Um, for me, I think as an individual moment, the coolest moment I saw was Robbie Gray nailing a goal after the siren from 45 out to beat Carlton. Yeah. Um, oh, I did enjoy that actually because after that, nuts. Jack... Was that before or after Jack? before. M- yeah. yeah. I would have enjoyed it even more if it was after we got gypped with that Jack Nunes bullshit. But The Nunes thing is sick if you're looking at the kick in isolation yeah. it is a little bit stinky the, how the context of him that. getting it was a bit yeah but as a moment it was pretty yeah. fantastic as well yeah and ultimately that Tabner shouldn't have just deliberately pushed out of bounds he should have just tried to yeah. bomb it as far forward as he could instead of just mm-hmm, ball yeah. over the fucking boundary line. that was a bit of a gaff um, so oh well yeah punching the ball instead of Brayshaw <laughs> 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 yeah, that's good. Good gear. Uh, um, yeah, so the Robbie Gray moment, uh, the Lions beating Richmond in the in that final, I thought was sick because of uh, what I thought was a very significant win. In the end, it didn't really matter too much, right. but um, it was cool to see the Lions win a home final. Obviously, their first finals win since I reckon oh9 uh, Just drop your guards a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. <laughs> I just called you out on that as well. <laughs> I just don't just like, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> where to from there? Oh, goodness, I hope that doesn't hit me. Anyway, uh, so the Lions <laughs> winning that final. Um, and Dusty's grand final goal, I think, is just in terms of a moment that will yeah. live on from that grand final. It's When I think of the grand final, I think of that goal. Mm. Um, even though the game was over, it was just an insane goal. Dusty magic. Insane goal. And... Um, and then I guess from an Eagles perspective, we had two really good wins this year. Beating Geelong in Perth, um, that was hot. And then uh, although on the live stream, my Uber Eats came two minutes to go in the game. And Oof. I had to run downstairs and get it. Yeah, it really <laughs> pissed me off. I nearly missed the end. But um, And then I think our biggest win this year in terms of an achievement was beating St Kilda in Queensland where we had about eight injuries. I think we had no yo, no Was that shoeing. the game where it was like Hamish Brayshaw debuted? Yeah, so thing, Hamish yeah. Brayshaw, uh, yeah, that was him. He debuted. I think we had Hamish Brayshaw, Xavier O'Neill and Luke, uh, not Luke Foley, and Braden Ainsworth all starting yeah. in the midfield. And it was like, oh my God. The only experienced yeah. midfielders we had, we had no Hutchings, no Archie, I think. The only We had Gaff and Kelly and a bunch yeah. of kids in the midfield. And Gaff and Kelly destroyed St. Kilda. They literally just winning every clearance. Like passing it, linking yeah. up with each other, setting each other up for goals. I think McGovern did his hammy halfway through the game as well, so we were another man down. Yeah. One of our best players. I'll say that's a key man down too. Another yeah, bloody... it was honestly one of the most heroic Eagles wins I've seen in a long time in terms yeah. of the yeah the struggle to, to yeah. win a game that we were uh, St Kilda won a final. They went further yeah. us this year, so um, yeah, that's a moment. That, that's a game that will live on. I was just so happy yeah. with that win. Um, so yeah, that's yeah. probably my best bloody Eagles up. moment for the year. Um, <sighs> What's been your favourite content to make in a YouTube sense this year? A few things. Well, so some of the, like that day trip, we went down to Drewsy's farm yeah. and shot a few vids. That was a real fun day. Some good videos. Chased a few chickens. Yeah, chased a few chicks. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody. <laughs> the Manscaped ads are actually really fun to make. Yeah. I reckon they're a laugh. We I have a bit of good fun with them. The live streams, they're great. Yeah. And yeah, even the fantasy potty, they're always a bit of fun. True. Like just a bit of a different spin on footy. Like I yeah. always enjoy playing a bit of fantasy, talking a bit of shit about it. Yeah, it'd be great to have more time to do more of it. Yeah. I think because Brendan's really knowledgeable about it. Um, yeah. As are a lot of people out there. But uh, yeah, no, that, they're all good fun. It's a good yeah. good chats. Um, the Lenny potties as well. Like, because I've yeah. known Lenny from, we played at North Rio. He's a good dude. I've always known how smart and knowledgeable it is about footy. So it's been great to get him on the channel a bit and share that knowledge mm, for sure he's uh he's probably i, I don't want to rank guests but in terms of the value he brought the pod it's probably mm. second to none in terms of like his knowledge and yeah. i watch all those pods back and i think yeah that's that's actually good content yeah, yeah we've actually made something yeah. cool here and i think the comments and feedback reflected that yeah. like even in my friend circles and stuff they all reckon the lenny pods are outstanding and stuff oh, and they love listening to them yeah that's cool it always yeah. it even even at ten thousand yeah. subscribers it yeah. still stuns me when i meet someone who watches it yeah, like, like even <laughs> like even jake who i hadn't seen in ages he was saying he always listens to them and loves them oh, the true footy ones yeah jake nelson oh really yeah good man yeah. 
Ah, oh, that's that's sick. I love uh, love love hearing stuff like that. Huh? Strokes my ego. No, no, really. <laughs> I'm I'm grateful. Um, yeah. So the pods, like all the pods I did this year over Skype with like Caden McDonald, Young King Cooks, and that was all this yeah, year. Yeah, that it feels like so long ago. Twisty. Um, that was cool because that was a. Uh, I know Caden and Cooko a lot better now. Um, I, I had a three-hour chat with Caden the other day on Skype. That was yeah. really cool. Um, but at the time, that was me stepping a little bit out of my comfort zone to, yeah. to interview these guys about YouTube and stuff like that. And they had a, like a massive 2019. Um, had a few yeah. setbacks this year in a YouTube sense just because yeah. of everything. Especially but. being in Victoria as well. The opportunities to film and do all that sort mm. of stuff would have been greatly diminished. Yeah, I think... That's and Caden cool. was going heavy on the music as well, hasn't he? True, yeah, yeah. he made an entire yeah, album yeah. and it was really good. So he had, yeah. he had a good year in that sense. Um, but I think, like, based on last year's projection, he probably yeah. could have expected to be a lot further along mm. in like subscribers this year. But Rona, you got to take, yeah, you got to take the hits. Yeah. Unfortunately, um, like even in sports in general, like apparently the ratings have been down through like. Is that right? Yeah, well, I know NBA the finals were like the worst rated finals almost ever. Damn. But I think that's also because it clashed with the NFL, which has usually never happened. Mm. Yeah, so I okay. think the NBA, yeah, like from that perspective, be... the NBA learned the lesson. Yeah, we can't go at the same time as the NFL. Yeah, well, that, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I've I've loved all the content we do with Drews. He's become yeah. a very good friend of ours. Um, yeah, met him pretty much the day we did the podcast. Yeah, yeah. Footy podcast, like 63, 56. Yeah, mid fifties. I'm I think. just making that up. Yeah. It could be. Yeah, I think it was mid fifties. Yeah. Um, could be 53 i don't know we've done a lot yeah. of podcasts this year i think we've done i think it was like 53 to 56 somewhere in there yeah because caden was 50 wasn't he yes yeah. yes yes you're right so it wasn't yeah. long after that but yeah. um yeah all the videos we've done with him even the ones on his channel afl pictionary I think yeah for me will live on it's <laughs> one of my favorites yeah that um, one's funny yeah basically had to draw something afl themed and like four out of six probably had cock and balls <laughs> in them so <laughs> you really see like a drop yeah. in my mental age when i'm on his channel versus yeah. when I'm on mine. so that's really good fun <laughs> Um, you know what is one of my favorite videos we did? The Skype one where you, Joy So, and myself oh, yeah, yeah, did that the was How World Was True Footy Know Each Other. I'd love yeah, to yeah. reshoot that um, yeah, in person, in person um, and do one with Drew's as well. I yeah, bloody earth. So, um, yeah, it's, and the live streams, like I said, yeah. uh, we did, what, like four last year? Two games, yeah. if that? No, I don't know how many. We did more than four last season. We probably did like five or six last year, this season. But we, we only started them in the second last year. Yeah, yeah, we but started late, but we got yeah. like a game or two in each week once we started. Yeah. yeah but either way like yeah, yeah we've done plenty now yeah. so like even the draft stream that was mm. long but good yeah yeah that's what she said <laughs> um yeah so been a good year for true footy i guess what do you um what do you hope to get out of next year what in terms of your vision for the channel do you i'd sort of like i'd sort of like to say us get a bit of momentum in a more normal footy season that'd be like my ideal scenario mm. sort of like where it's be more cool. normal more people interested in going to games and engaging with it yeah so that's, that's the thing like you just touched on it in part one like the amount of people that just go to games each week for to pique their interest like that'll be back and mm. there'll be more people hopefully that engagement comes back and we sort of see that growth that we saw in 19 because yeah yeah i, I, I think i think it's possible but yeah yeah the thing is once you got the ten thousand, then they sort of, it sort of spreads more it sort of snowballs mm. to an extent you'd know you know more about the how it yeah the, the progresses stuff. Yeah, yeah no for sure i think uh but once you get that masses of people, then it sort of can... Yeah. yeah. I think there's, there's plenty of reason to be optimistic. We had adversity this year. I don't want to make excuses for yeah. the channel not growing as fast as it did last year. But um, yeah, there's upside. So mm. we can only be positive about it. So. Yeah, I'm it's, quite uh, optimistic. It's been good fun with Absolutely. you as well on this podcast. Bloody um, How many pods have we done this year? I reckon like 25-ish. Probably. I think we average about 23 a year. So yeah. that makes One sense. One around. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so no, it's been good fun, man. So Bloody um, thank you for everything. Um, I guess, yeah, I just want to maybe finally spare a thought for everyone doing it tough at the moment yeah. because, uh, as we allude to quite often, we're in Perth and things are very fucking normal here. Yeah. And, uh, you see on the news, people doing it tough, particularly in like Europe and the UK, but also over East Victoria yeah. and Sydney have had fucking shit 2020s. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, just, um, sparing a thought for you guys. Yeah. Um, don't want to lose sight of how lucky we have we have it at the moment and hopefully yep. we can bring you some value some in some small way we can yep. hopefully keep make entertaining content yep. um yeah bloody yeah earth. yeah sweet all right well that probably wraps up true footy yep. podcast 69 69 it was sexy it really did it live really up was. to it yeah bloody earth. Uh, i think i talked a lot of shit in this one but hey it's the off season so yeah. 
yeah it's the more casual pod anyway it is it really is so uh, we'll probably be back in january because yeah. as long as we've got a sponsor we're going to keep making podcasts so yeah bloody hell. um even without we've done it for plenty of time without one yeah now we have one it's fucking sick yeah. <laughs> now we yeah we're now there's even more <laughs> pressure um now we get free shirts Fuck we yeah. do have a plan to get lenny back on in yeah. january and do i want to do a potty reliving the 2001 super draft yep. so um i want to get people's gauge people's interest on that um we're going to do it anyway but yeah. um it would be great as always to invite some feedback mm. from what people like about the channel and what they want to see over the off season i do have plenty of ideas but i'm always yep. open to suggestions so bloody have sweet all right thanks guys have a happy new year safe one and uh we'll see you in the next episode you